So now here I am, I'm a single, I have a $2,000 deductible, the board's giving me $1,500. I want to put in an additional $500 to cover the rest of my deductible because I know I'm going to have uh, over $2,000 in medical expenses this year. And I also know I have some dental work coming up and some vision work coming up that cost me approximately $600. So I'm going to want to put in the additional $500 and that six, uh, of the deductible and that $600 for my dental and vision. Anybody who has a flexible spending account in here knows what it's like to prepare for those things. And if you're planning on orthodontia and Lasix, it's a great way to set aside a lot of money on a tax deferred basis and pay far less than your neighbor does who pays it out of their pocket or their regular checking account. Okay? Um, one of the benefits to the HSA and why you would want to sock away some extra money, unlike the FSA, is that the FSA is use it or lose it at the end of the year. So you have to use that money that you pledged to set aside. In the HSA, any additional money you put into the account, it goes in tax-free, it grows tax-free, it rolls over from year to year tax-free. Okay? Um, and you could also earn interest on, in it, on it, but it's very nominal at this, at this time with the way interest rates are. So the benefit is, is if I decide not to have that LASIK surgery, or I'm thinking about that LASIK surgery three years down the road, I can gently um, overfund my HSA account some to grow some type of balance to use for long-term medical expenses. Orthodontia is a, is a, is a great one. Um, the other benefit to this is, is if you save and save and save in this account and you never really come up using it, it's actually an IRA at the end uh, uh, when you retire. Uh, now, government retirement, so like six, age 65. When you hit age 65, you can take it as normal retirement income and pay standard income tax on it. So it has both that medical um, tax savings vehicle, but if you have a balance when you're ready to retire and you're age 65, you can also take it as an income retirement account. Can I, Definitely heading there. Thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the prompt. Okay, so we've had, we basically covered how the money goes in, how it can be used, how it grows, why you might want to put in some excesses, um, kind of all the benefits. So, what are the concerns here? One of the concerns is, is what happens if I have a claim on July 17th? Okay, we'll pick July 17th, and it's uh, again using a single. It's a ten thousand dollar claim. I'm liable for the first two thousand. Then everything else is hundred percent paid for. How do I pay for it? I only have twenty-five dollars in my account. First of all, if you're looking at a ten thousand dollar claim, um, there's a whole billing action that's going to occur. So it happens on July seventeenth. The hospital is going to process that bill. It takes them a couple weeks of process. It goes up to Cigna. Cigna takes a look at the bill, sends out those EOBs that we were discussing, and finally, sometime around mid-August, you're actually going to receive some type of bill. The bill is going to give you plenty of time to pay for it. So by 9-1, you'll have already received money into your account. So you've got